sustainability awareness and propagation. So uh, in training, as you can see, uh, I've you know, marked out all the steps, clay preparation. I mean, normally they take only one day to prepare the clay. We take over five days and so on. And then fabrication of molds and how do you make the tiles and how do you dry them? How do you apply the engo, which is the astar? And there too, we've done now, we've got recipes that are better than the ones that were traditional because I, I, we've tried to see that there are no bubbles that, you know, and so on and so forth. So a lot, lot of work has been done in that. And then how do you, you grind the colors and the glazes and it it's all chemical free and there's, we don't buy anything from the market. It's all, uh, you know, from the raw material itself. And then tracing the artwork and coloring and glazing and then firing. So this is the whole, these are topics that will be taught and they, everybody must learn about them, whoever wants to be involved in this next. And then the pattern books, and uh, this is something that we are, we are preparing because this is again important if you want people to use Makli as a source or as a source of inspiration, which I believe is very important. So these pattern books will be useful for uh, artisans, for community, for art schools. And of course, if we can spread them to, uh, you know, to even school children, that would be the best way. But then the contents would be of Kashi patterns, stone carvings, calligraphy. There's a huge amount that is there that can be actually, which will, uh, Make every every little piece that you make special and specially attached to Makli. Next. And then, you know, when you make them, then this is how the whole thing comes out. And uh, so, the, so we believe that it's a good idea to have the, uh, the UNESCO Makli Kashi Atelier that is being upgraded with the help of UNESCO, that that, that should be used for uh, historic monuments, shrines, mosques, and contemporary buildings, because this would be really high quality stuff. And next. The, the second uh, line is, is where we are, uh, uh, Heritage Foundation has actually put up a zero carbon cultural center at Makli village where we are, we've trained the community, but the community cannot really work at the Makli World Heritage site. So for them, we have, we've made the special arrangement where they can make jewelry, keychain rings, spiritual mementos, bird sculptures, decorative plates, etc., which you will hopefully see tomorrow. Next. So the way forward, uh, the last slide. Support the UNESCO Kashi Center for fabrication of glaze tiles for conservation of Makli monuments. We need a lot of work now there because people are trained and we can train many more. And then support to Heritage Foundation for conducting training, training sessions for different groups like supervisors, artisans, communities, and students. We have no funding for this. Marketing support for jewelry, mementos, and saleable items. And support for experimentation with kilns. There's a lot of work to be done with kilns still. We're still using wood. And we're trying to see how we can use other alternative sources like uh, solar panels and also um, uh, sawdust. And natural colors and glazes, and a lot of work can be done on this still. And then spreading kilns and women's uh, youth trainings in villages and in schools. I mean, this is something that I think will really push the whole thing up. So uh, this is my uh, uh, my submission to you that, you know, uh, 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 that I think we can take it forward. We now know that the craft can be spread by training a large number of people, and especially women. Our innovation in building small kilns has provided the opportunity to build them in even remote areas of the province. Women can be easily taught all the processes which can bring about a revival within communities with the love of ornamentation that exists among the women folk in, in Sin, particularly in all provinces, but in Sin particularly, it would be possible to nurture the craft for decorating their own houses even. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yasmin, for that very clear and informative presentation. Um, I'm supposed also to be keeping some check on time, but I don't wear a watch and I've switched off my <laughs> mobile. mobile. So can I ask each presenter to voluntarily do some self-censorship? Uh, you have 20 minutes and uh, uh, Salman Beg, who has been heading some of the most wonderful conservation work that's been done recently, and he will tell us more about that. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. What I'd like to do is, before really getting into this, uh, the, the case study of Sugarfort, just to quickly introduce to you the Khan Development Network. Uh, I think it is unique among development uh, networks, agencies, as a private development agency, that while it has the social development pillar, it has the economic pillar, but interestingly, and for me, the most important one is the cultural development pillar as well. So it works on three pillars. And I think that's important to understand the, the ethos of the Aachen Development 
network. Let me see if I can keep on moving the slides here. So the Aachen Trust for Culture is the, is the cultural agency of the Aachen Development Network. This uh, logo that you see is, represents the Mukarnas, which is a transfer from the cube to the dome. Uh, that's the Aachen Development Network. I did mention that, yeah, let's see, yeah. We got the economic development, the social development, and then culture. And that's an important thing for us. To, sorry, maybe I need to go the other way around. Okay. The Aachen Trust for Culture, uh, and, and you'll be very glad to know that uh, the very first award of the Aachen Award for Architecture was held in Lahore in 1980, the very first time. It has had 13 cycles since then. And my friend from Bangladesh was mentioning that uh, there were two uh, uh, architects who recently won the awards, yeah, in the last awards, anyway. Uh, the other important point out here I'd like to stress is that the Aachen Historic Cities Program came into being in 1991. <coughs> and again, this started from Pakistan from the north, from the mountains at Baltad Fort. Uh, the Aachen Culture Service Pakistan, which I represent, we work in uh, two areas, uh, basically up in the north and uh, in Lahore. And today we're going to talk a bit about the mountains, uh, about our work in the mountains. Uh, briefly, down there is Islamabad, you fly into Gilgit or Drive by road takes you 16 hours, 20 hours, and then you could go up to Karimabad, Hunza, and onto the Chinese border, or you can fly into Sikad and visit Shigar and Khaplu. And the places of interest for us are Khaplu, Shigar, and Karimabad. Uh, for us, the vision that's been set out, and I'd like to read this is, the aim of the Aachen Trust for Culture is to leverage the unique transformative power of culture to improve, to improve the socioeconomic conditions prevailing in many Muslim populations. Communities that often have a rich cultural heritage but that live in poverty. We've also seen how such projects can have a positive impact well beyond conservation, promoting good governance, the growth of civil society, a rise in incomes and economic opportunities, greater respect for human rights and better stewardship of the environment. I think the point being made is that conservation in itself is not the end all. It's a step to improving quality of lives. And that's really engaging with the communities. And that's the end all of all the work that we do out there. Uh, those are the conditions of our mountains up there. Totally, you can contrast that with Karachi or Sindh or whatever, you know. Uh, it's 72,000 square kilometers. Barely 1.5% is usable. Barely 1.5% of that 72,000 kilometers, square kilometers is usable. This is a photograph of the 1930s. Yeah. This is a photograph of more recent times. Not much has changed. Maybe the vegetation has increased, but the mountains are as barren as they were. The river continues to flow down there. Getting the water to that whatever available land has been a struggle throughout the ages. And within that, then to work on uh, what assets we have up in the mountains is basically nature, which is amazing, which is attractive, which has its own charm, and then the culture that comes along with it. That's winters, and winters is extremely harsh out there. Uh, that's the old Silk Road of old. You can see some horses along that Silk Road, the famous Silk Road. This is the 1930s. This is again a photograph of the 1930s using the old Silk Road. That used to be our bridge out there uh, way back in time, 1930s again. This is a British photographer, uh, gentleman by the name of Mr. Lorimer who took these photographs. Huh? Uh, life was tough, extremely tough. You'll notice most of them don't have, uh, well, footwear. extremely rudimentary, but we still had a lot of diversity, you know. You name it, the religions were there, the Bon, the Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, animism, different peoples, languages. Uh, we believe mountains have the greatest diversity of cultures. 
each village is real, literally different to the other village, you know. And each valley can speak, the inhabitants can speak at least three languages. The valley up north, the valley down south, and the valley themselves, you know. Amazing diversity out there. Uh, so talking about, and now we come to the late uh, 1930s, as it were. The British were there, and these trade routes were the Gilgit route, down from uh, Raul Pindi then, of course now Islamabad, the Gilgit route into Tashkurgan and Kashgar, the Baltistan route, or the Leh route, into uh, Yarkand, Khotan Yarkand, through Leh, and the Chitral route. So the Silk Road has been prominent in life up in the north. What are our objectives? And this really determines the way we work with communities. To set in motion through strategic investments, social, economic, and institutional processes that can promote, manage, uh, protect, manage, and promote cultural heritage as an integrated part of sustainable development. Number two, enable effective and participatory community stewardship of heritage and environmental resources. Number three, create income and enterprise opportunities for communities based on proactive cultural heritage management. And the case study that I'm presenting hopefully exhibits all these. For the Alkhan Development Network, and, and I took talk in broader terms, it's important to engage with the community. And to engage with the community, as Yasmin Lari mentioned, you need to build trust out there. And that can only be done on a long-term basis. So what did we do when we went into Baltistan? This we went in 1997-98, in in thanks to some funding by the Norwegian Embassy, who I need to acknowledge, who have been our great supporters for the last 25 years. Uh, we went into Baltistan and did a, uh, carried out an inventory of the heritage there. And we selected, in conjunction with the local communities, two projects, one in Shigra and one in Khaplu that we thought we needed to do there to establish that, uh, that credibility, that confidence in the community. So one is this, uh, the Amburik Mosque that you see in this picture. This is about 600 years old. Notice it's a mosque, it doesn't have a dome. It's possibly got more Buddhist influence out there. So this was restored. That's a before and after photograph. Yeah. This is one in Khaplu. This is the Astana in Khaplu. Uh, may I mention the, the Amburik Mosque is one a UNESCO award. Thank you, UNESCO. And the Astana is also one a UNESCO award. This one is in the other valley of Baltistan. The wooden structure is an amazing thing. Yeah? We were able to put it back without taking it apart, literally, but kind of winch it back into place. Because if we had attempted to take it out, we would not have been able to put it together again. So that's a view of the Astana after restoration and the magnificent jolly work. Remarkable craftsmanship. It's very beautiful. It is. Uh, who's that gentleman? That's me about uh, 18 years ago, right, a while back. So the other important element is one is trust, of course, but engaging with the community. And this is on a long-term basis. So we engage with the community. This is starting in 1999, actually. Uh, and uh, with the community of Shiga. About the intention of carrying out the restoration of the Shiga Ford and the, the benefits that would flow from that for the community. There's some more meetings uh, at different levels. Here we have the our Norwegian friend, Mr. Uh, Ramselin, Alfarn Ramselin, there uh, with us in a meeting with the community. Because it's important for all our partners also to engage with communities and gain that confidence uh, of working with them. Uh, that's our, uh, the chairman of the Akhan Culture Service Pakistan, another member of the AKCSP board, interacting with two leaders of the Shigar Town Management Development Society. So we were interacting at all levels, you know, at the management level, at the staff level, at the governance level, uh, with partners, our, our partners there. Mm, and then we went ahead and did some small projects again, demonstration projects with the community in Khaplu. So this one was land donated by the poorest man in Khaplu 
for whom we built a house or improved his house using Norwegian funds. And in exchange, he donated his land on which we built this community place. Again, to establish the communication with the community. So that's the community building in Khablu. So our key principles are to infuse new life to historic landmark buildings, make restored buildings economically sustainable, and serve the, and these serve as nucleus for comprehensive area revitalization. That's a bolted fort, which was restored. It's won many awards. That's the Altet Fort in 1930, back there. And used as a place by the community. That's again the Altet Fort. That's Khaplu Palace, again in the mountains. And Vipli was recently there, I believe, in October. Okay. That's how it was. It's been put into reuse as a heritage guest house. So it generates funds for the communities. Uh, did you stay in that room? Uh, okay. We use a lot of local, uh, we use everything is indigenous. All the wood used is poplar wood, which is green wood. So the monies remain in the local economy. Just want to highlight that. And now turning to Sugar Fort. That's in 1895. That's the 1920s. That's Sugar Fort. And the idea was again to use this as a uh, heritage building. So that's a before after. I'll just run through some of these slides and working with the communities to improve, because I said the anchor point is meant to improve community life. So whereas sanitation, water supply, payments, uh, improved uh, community facilities of washing, uh, skills being brought back, and importantly, education as well. Uh, the community requested for, demanded for a school, and we were able to build this using Italian funds, but notice all this is stone, local, poplar wood. And the best part for us is the impact out here. It is girls and boys in the same class in sugar, which is a very conservative society. I, I cannot stress that enough. This is a Jamia Masjid built by the community of sugar. They were planning to build one in concrete with a proper dome and with the minarets and the standard uh, mosque stuff, you know. But when they saw the work done in Shigar, they came back to us and said, we'd like to do it in the old way. So this is a magnificent mosque, Jamia Masjid Shigar. It's huge, actually. Mm -hmm. And they were able to do it, or they've been able to do it because we provided expertise, but the skills were available because of the work on the Shigar fort. So all the car master carpenters have been working there. Uh, we empower communities. And uh, this one is tangible as well, you know. This is... Uh, this was recent, this was in August that we distributed the, the profits which we realized from the sugar fort. 30% of the profits go to the local community, direct. And we were able to distribute $75,000. That's the sugar uh, chairman, chairman of the sugar TMDS. That's the vice president of the sugar TMDS. Uh, th these are our Norwegian friends here, the Norwegian ambassador. That's the Chairman of the Baltistan Culture Foundation, uh, sorry, Khaplu uh, Town Management Society, and that's the representative of the Baltistan Culture Foundation. $75,000 were shared with them. This is direct money, and the projects are meant to be to help the culture and the community, uh, and we do the monitoring. In addition to this is all the other benefits, of course. Uh, the amount of staff that's employed, the technical training that's done. Uh, there are local bodies out there established by the communities, the Shigar and the Khaplu one. Uh, community facilities have come up, you know. Additional funds have come into that place. Uh, the school has been set up, as I just showed you. Uh, sustainability, because popular wood use is increasing all the time. Indirect employment. Uh, two new uh, small hotels have come up. And of course, there's pride and identity out there, uh, carpentry, etc. 
uh, huge increase in tourism, huge increase in tourism. What it does, it, it brings the world to sugar. So there's this interaction, this diversity, this getting together. Uh, let me end by just saying that uh, we've been able to, since its uh, opening in 2004, direct benefits of over $1.6 million have gone to the community. Indirect benefits of the same amount. Our total investment on Chigger Fort was just about $1.6 million. And we consider this to be a perpetual, sustainable, well, development tool, may I suggest, be beneficiary tool for that. Uh, that's the impact out there. Uh, 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 let me, uh, if, if you don't mind, just end on one other thing. Heritage does not take a lot of money. In all these years, we've spent $25 million in Gilgit Baltistan from 1992 to 2017, just $25 million. But the impact is amazing. So the monies needed from the governments are pretty small, but the impact can be huge and outstanding. And it benefits all of us. You know, as Pakistanis, we, we love that place. As foreigners who've been there, uh, I think they really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you, you. you Suman Beg. May I now request a third speaker, Jihad Harun, to give us a presentation on their work in Jordan. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I would like to thank UNESCO for organizing this and for the very kind invitation. And I would like to thank our Pakistani authority for facilitating uh, to have this workshop. I'll present a project called SHIP, and of course, as the presentation will be ready. Well, you know, in, uh, our project sustainable culture heritage through local community engagement, it's uh, I've implemented by an NGO, American Center for Oriental Research, 50 years of experience in Jordan, and funded by USAID. This project started in 2014, and the lifetime of the project will be ended in 2018. It's four million, uh, the total budget of this project. We are working in Jordan in nine different sites, but I hope this will be working. Yeah, that's good. Of course, this is the workshop. I will, uh, you know, in Jordan, with a vast number of archaeological sites, more than 100,000 archaeological sites has been identified through our mega Jordan database, GIS Interactive in Jordan. So it's a huge burden on the in Jordan uh, authorities and despite the surrounding region problems. Uh, in this context, we are trying to support the government, we are trying to support the authorities to preserve and conserve this rich heritage. This is our map in Jordan ship sites starting from the upper north of Jordan. We have nine sites in Canal and Madaba and the Gor Safi Jordan, Rift Jordan Valley near the Dead Sea going down to the Gulf of Aqaba. So we are stretching, we are working around Jordan from north to south. Our first start, we start the model. There is a site called the Winged Lions in Petra. It's a very, very important site. The ACOR, our institute, started to work on this site 2009. And from that site, the, the notion came that we need to, to integrate the local community within the, the conservation work and giving and sharing with them the knowledge through empowering local women, uh, youth people, and of course, local workers with, with, with a good partnership. So we start to, to transfer knowledge to the, to, to different workers through, uh, conservation, restoration, preservation, even classification of pottery and how they can take role. Of course, even, even creating the signs. I will, uh, yeah, and I will not uh, focus on the World Heritage Sites uh, due to the recommendations uh, from our, uh, our organizers. I will go directly to the other sites. And of course, we are working in, in a site called Betras. Betras is a recent, very important discovery in Jordan. It's a very, it's a tomb uh, from the Roman period. This tomb uh, uh, with 53 inscriptions, moral paintings, fresco, one of the rare in the Middle East. Uh, uh, this discovery now we are, uh, 
It will be launched next month, uh, and we are working with different international consortium, and we are transferring knowledge of moral painting conservation to the locals. Of course, in Madaba, in the middle of the city of mosaics in Jordan, we are building a community-based museum. This museum will be, will be built uh, with, the, uh, with the whole partnership with the community uh, from different stages. And then in the south of Jordan, there's a site called Busaira. It's a wool uh, fort from 600 BC. And uh, we are trying to build up, uh, we started to uh, working in land landscaping and there is a nearby school. So we have built a good partnership and the center for education within the school itself. Towards the Gulf of Aqaba, the only port in Jordan, this is the first time we have to initiate the charter underwater archaeology. And there is a site on the shore itself called Ayla. And we have started uh, with, of course, with a collaboration with a local NGO, Jordanian local NGO. We started the first underwater archaeology survey in Jordan and to initiate this charter. And we have found some very good results would be, will be launched next month with our, our conference. In Wadi Ram, the World Heritage Mixed Site, the only natural uh, uh, World Heritage Site in Jordan, it's a mixed one, natural and cultural. We have initiated something very new, which I will focus on some, on rock art preservation in Wadi Ram. We have a very yeah, sensitive problem related to the work stability of, of Wadi Ram. It's a very sensitive, protected area, and always the World Heritage Center and its different resolutions and, decis and decisions insist on having a database, inventories, and rock stability measurements, and how we can monitor this very important site. So we initiate a project called Rock Art Preservation, and of course, with a co collaboration with the Canadian University, Queen's University, we have initiated something called RASI. RASI is Rock Art Sustainable uh, Monitoring uh, Program, and we have trained the local community on how to read the rock arts, and how they can watch, monitor, the, the they can monitor the vandalism, and even they can uh, document any any remains just with their using just only their smartphones or tablets. They have ac open access, GIS access to main database. With two minutes, he can monitor, he can document, and he can measure the stability of any rock inside the protected area. This is the, our database, the Rasi Wadram database. Very easy to use. It has, we have, we have uh, trained 25 people from the local, and we have uh, site stewards in, in, within the protected area, of course, with the government staff whom are uh, the managing the, the area. You can see that we even they learned how to, to take photos, uh, surveys, monitoring, different aspects. In Ghor Safi, the Jordan Valley, near the Dead Sea, of course, you know the Dead Sea, it's uh, one of the poverty bucket areas in Jordan, and uh, there is a sugar factory. In Jordan, we have 25 sugar factories from the early Islamic period, from the Umayyads, from the 8th century AD. And this one still, the, the only one remains, this sugar factory, which, 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 we, which we think of, it's very important to preserve and conserve, and it presents this very important side. So from the beginning, we have engaged the local community in conservation, preservation, restoration, building the trail, and even they shared us how to write down the, the interpretation panels. And there is a museum nearby, that we call this museum the lowest museum in the world, because it's below 400 below sea level. And the museum is there, so we, we made connection between the site and the museum, and of course, we share the local community. You can see, if even that this trail has been built by the locals. The science has been built by the locals. This is a museum. We gave many, many training courses on uh, conservation, restoration for mosaics, and for, for pottery, and for, uh, for different aspects. And of course, this is one of the, our, uh, our, you know, uh, inauguration and our cert certifications uh, uh, launching in the site with the help of our colleagues from Athens, the Nobilitis. So this is the site after, you know, after we did the conservation restoration two years of work. And you can see the trail. We have a trail. Of course, the trail is reversible, of course, incompatible with international standards. This is the, the you know, interpretation panels, which has been, of course, written by our site steward from the local community themselves. 
مير مذكور نير باي اتس ان ذا ديزرت اوف وادي عربه تو اتس ا فيري ريموت اريا اند ذير از ا فيري رومان ويل نون سايت ذا سايت واز لوكيتد تو واتش ذا انسنس روتس ذا انسنس روتس از كونكتد وذ باكستان وذ سند كونكتد وذ يمن وذ عمان وذ ارابيان بنسويلا اب تو جوردن ذن ويل كونكت اب تو سيريا اند اور تو غزه تو ذا ويست Then the coil goes to Egypt. If we want to, we think if this authentic route must be well preserved and must be well connected because it's an interchange. This will be open like a, say, a dialogue between different civilizations. So we have worked within the, within the site and even this site, the, this route, will be connected with Betra, the World Heritage Betra, the Western Gate of Betra. So if you are in Betra, you can go, you can go down through the terrains, 25 kilometers, and to the Jordan Rift Valley. Then you can go either to Gaza or either to Egypt, or you can go up to the, to the north. So we have mapped, we have uh, created stations on this route, And we have did like small interpretation center. You can see the route now. We have after uh, mapping the route and uh, interpretation signs, and uh, we can we build some marks on on the route. And the local community, you can see, they did the whole job. They did the whole work, for, of course, under the supervision of our colleagues from George Washington University, who did that transfer of knowledge. Our methodology always transfer of knowledge. We insist on this term always. You can see this is the, the route between Petra and between the Jordan Wadi Araba. And of course, now we, j- just to sustain the work, we have signed an agreement between Petra and Wadi Araba Community NGO. This agreement will sustain the work to the future. And those two communities will be, will benefit directly from the tourists coming up from Petra or going down from Bir Mathkor. We think this was a very important agreement to sustain our, our presence. So in Milijmal, our uh, third site, it's uh, on the tentative list. It's uh, in the northern eastern Badia, the desert, the Basel Desert, or desert of, of Jordan. It's a remote area. We have, there's, for, since 40 years they are working at Milijmal, but never thought that they need to create a trail, a site trail. It's a, it's a huge Roman city, more than 100 kilometers, square kilometers, has been abandoned. And we think we need to, to build up a trail and the signages, interpretation uh, center, of course, with the, with the engagement of, of, of the local communities from Mijmal. So we have worked with uh, Calvin University, which already they are already working on, on the site, to build up this trail. And we have succeeded to, of course, with, uh, with the partnership of our local community members to build up the, the trail. Now we have a trail. We have more than uh, two kilometers of trail. Mm, uh, all the tourists now, they can walk around, they can see the, the signages, the, the new signages, 35 huge signages, panels built by a local <laughs> company, local community company. It's, it's not abroad, it's from Umm Jamal itself. This is what I will, I will, يعني I will present in the coming slides one of our methodologies to build up small micro enterprises within the local communities for specific tasks. Of course, the local community, they even they took all the, the, even drones, how they can fly drones, and we, we did that. Uh, and one of, the very, one of the very important issues now, we are building uh, a management plan for the whole site. And this management plan, of course, led by the community. You can see mainly, mainly of the audience are the community representatives. And we are starting from the bottom line, from the community themselves. We are not giving them a, a ready management plan document just to implement. Not we, no, we are, bl- we are building this management plan, plan from the bottom itself because we believe in partnership with them just to be more a يعني more workable document rather to be a document on the shelf. Three minutes. Three minutes. I'm on time. Tools of our involvement. You know, we have many initiatives like uh, communities for heritage. We have youth for heritage and we have women in conservation initiatives. So we have different huge initiatives in, initiatives in Jordan in different parts. We are working with, uh, with the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Fire, diff- different ministries. Of course, our main partner is the Department of Antiquities of Jordan, but we have many partnerships. Sites so to worship. Our, one of the, our methodologies tools we are implementing, we have 13 sites of in each site, uh, creating micro enterprises, 
We have now created until now three uh, profits companies for my, for the host communities. And now for each company is different specific task. And we succeeded. One of them, Sela for vocational training in, in Petra. And now they are, they have, they started the, uh, to, to give certificates for vocational training for the local communities in Wadi Musa and abroad. Heritage education, we believe in our heritage education because youth empowerment, we have uh, worked with Mr. Education. Hands on learning, one of the, one of the very important tools we believe in. Of course, knowledge sharing, as I said, knowledge sharing, we believe in the, and this always we are implementing knowledge sharing with different institutions, done and to do, you know, enabling environment through institutional development. This very, this is a challenging point. We can delay this point when the, when the discussion will be open because we, we believe always you have to build up your partners because if I'm working in the, in the local community, I can, maybe I can succeed in one, one point, but I have governmental legal partners. I have to build up their capacity and, uh, and extend their knowledge about local community importance. Of course, major expected uh, outcomes, you know, comes with our last chart, improved skills. You know, the school activities, improved skills, female 1,164. Uh, better employment, thousands of uh, for better employment chances. Job creation, we are creating jobs in near the archaeological sites because we believe in host communities. So in conclusion, I will skip the conclusion because uh, the... Give us a okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. In the conclusion, we believe that the, by the um, empowering, you know, and engaging the local communities to foster archaeological sites is very important. We believe in partnership. We we don't. Uh, we believe in sense of to raise the sense of pride to in, in the local communities because they are not workers. We don't we don't, we don't deal with them as workers. We have to raise the the, the sense of, res, of respect within them. We are building the model in ship. We are, this is not a duplic we are not duplicating. We are not replicating. We are building the model. Next year, 2018, we will present the Jordanian Authority our vision, our model. Of course, we have we have been exposed to a UNESCO model, the site stewardship already in UNESCO and other country examples. But what we thought that we have to build the model from the bottom with sharing our own experience, local with international experience, to build up the, the model, which we think we maybe we will succeed in presenting this uh, methodology and this model. And uh, thank you again uh, for uh, your kind uh, attention. This is our website, our Facebook, our USH chip. If you need more information, just uh, easily you can download anything. You can send us any inquiries, any questions. I'm ready to answer. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, I was in time. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you Dr. Haroon. Um, and the last presentation of this session from Chandra Shekhar Saha from Bangladesh and uh, give their presentation the work on terracotta good uh, it's not a morning but it's not afternoon also in between uh, I like to thanks to UNESCO Islamabad that uh, I'm being here to the just invited me and get the opportunity to share our experience with our other colleagues. Those are working a different area in the whole over the world, in especially in Pakistan also. And I like to thank my uh, Islamabad UNESCO office and then Bangladesh UNESCO office, and then especially Johi Han, but she initiated the project. Then we can make a story with our Waters, the World Heritage Site in Pahapur. In the, there's the significance, uh, this photograph, uh, I like to share with you. When we just uh, have a survey, the, what is the situation, present situation in the Potter's village today, then one of the Potter's, he shows us how to terracotta itself communicate with you by sound. He just beat the pots and then there's the sound. He says, the pot says to you 
the i am fine i am okay you can uh, use me as you way so that is the learning the how to communicate with the uh, things the philosophically this is bangladesh you know about it uh, we have a the world heritage site uh, uh, sundarban then archaeological site tea garden uh, cultural elements the folk song and then the la horizon line of dhaka city uh, seashore mango garden uh, and then traditional adivasis i mean tribal community and uh, and the water and the boat we have archaeological and heritage heritage site in bangladesh and then our Uh, project in the on the surrounding in the pahapur which is shown in the below the unesco rock ponds in the trust project the local community involvement in the sustainable development of the ruin of buddhist vihara pahapur world heritage site bangladesh that that uh, all the plaques still it is uh, in there and then our project is the local community how to they involved with this and then sustainable development comes to their lifestyle and livelihood okay thank you uh, the from dhaka city it is uh, it is here this one oh sorry uh from dhaka city to paharpur project it is a 243 km and this is the site uh where we have work and there the two potters village we just selected from the site from here this is the paharpur this is the paharpur and this is the uh way it is a 9.1 km mitapukur and then jamalpur there is the another one 7.5 km this is the project area and this is a community's village and this project is supported by uh, all those organization government of bangladesh world heritage conservation unesco and unesco dhaka office and then we are implementer uh, organization national cross council of bangladesh when this is the photograph we just selected for that all the artisans after the inauguration day they, we just visited them to the paharpur project it is one thing uh, we have to uh, realize that they are in the community they don't move in the uh, i mean nearest uh, small city and anywhere because they are very under poverty level and then they feel oh paharpur project paharpur there is the we have i mean heard about it so what with us and then this is the first time we just bring them there and then show the all the plaques and then uh, tell them that maybe their forefather and they know even then there is the relationship between the two com- i mean potters uh, generations but they, we are proud of them and then they are also proud of their forefathers because they are making plaque in the surrounded in the paharpur because it is a i mean trust and belief and confident so many things together this is the projects at glance the documentation of the terracotta plaques that is the other uh, agencies is i mean involved with this socio anthropology survey the local community accounts they just are doing this we are just uh, uh, we are uh, doing only the this part the capacity building to the local artisans traditional terracotta plaque making process and then contemporary in um, innovative innovative terracotta products with two is the result of the things and then after that we just make a market linkage through the craft fair in dhaka and pahapur and then uh, technical support and then 
artisans for income generation. I mean, both of the things for the market linkage. And then one side, the World Heritage Site, and the other side is the participants of the local community. That e-commerce, they just make a survey and research uh, by e-commerce Bangladesh. The pub publication take uh, place, uh, I mean, to help uh, to take the UNESCO Dhaka office, this, this two publication already published. Before the project, we just make a one understanding for the organograms that we take the uh, crafts councils, resource persons, other resource person from the experts from the outside, and then advisory committee from UNESCO Dhaka office. We just make a small work plan. The objective and reality assessment according to the project concept, research about the traditional knowledge and the skill assessment at present on the potter's community, survey of the heritage sites and then partic participants villages and then workshop content development and then workshop uh, during the workshop we just make it two phases one and two the product development for the terracotta fair and exhibition exhibition curating marketing linkage for the potters economic development and then sustainability and then achievement analysis this is the i mean time Frame every project have a, some kind of this uh, kind of work. Then we started in the April 2016, and then we finished it in the March 2017. And straight one year. All of you know that UNESCO is very much concerned about the time uh, line in the project. So we are just, uh, I mean, helping all the teams and the members. We just finished it in the within the, within the year. In the beginning, the three uh, representation: the government, archaeological uh, people, and then uh, UNESCO Dhaka office representative through the Beatrice, head of the uh, UNESCO. She is also with us, and then. Bangladesh National Crafts Council EC members, so those are working on this project. We just uh, have a survey in the site and then we just discuss what is the strategy should be taken, but may be taken, and then it is a uh, match with the, our project objective. We just uh, study the potter's village to the potter's village. What is their lifestyle? What is the product range? And then what are the things that they are doing every day? This is the potter's village. This, this is, uh, they are the using traditional methods for the glazing. And then it is a vegetable, uh, natural things. Nothing is from the outside they are put in, or no chemical, nothing else. This is the product every day they are making for their uh, livelihood. And then they are selling in the market. And then the demand of this kind of things is every day is decreasing. We discuss with the with them and then make a small survey documents ourselves to notification their, about their skill, about their product, about their uh, thinking, about their technique. So many things, and then we make a one. Uh, I mean, survey documents like this. That name, education, then the family members, how much he just earned, this kind of things. This is the participants uh, we just selected for our workshop. It's good to see so many women. 
because the i mean uh, men's are very less involvement with that uh, this is the um, very expert uh, artist in then making a terracotta plaque and then he's a from the t- traditional potter's community but his skill and knowledge is very pretty man uh, pretty good and then he is from other side of this because we need one person who just co- completely communicate with them very properly we must make a uh, just i bring uh, all those here everyone we make a uh, one portfolio because uh, then they can feel oh, we are also important we have a book and then my uh, picture on the book and then about my detail on the book that they feel something some kind of proudness on that and then two uh, two workshop we make two books and then training workshop we just uh, make a small but we make in Bang- <coughs> bengali version also because it is documented for the we have to submit it to unesco also so that's why it have a, both versions and the clay preparation based on the stall making design transfer shape making uh, material preparation for the mold mold making the plaque making from the mold dyeing process drying process and then uh, uh firing process and then cleaning the verse additions process this is the inauguration day we involve with the local uh, leaders also and the village uh, union councils chairmen and then members because everywhere if you don't uh, engage the government body and then archaeological people then your work will be more smoother and they encourage the community uh, people on the day one that it is a good opportunity people comes with us and then besides with you then we can go together to betterment our life and then we preserve conserve or preserve or we can talk about our heritage site it is a pride of our nations this is the site visit we just uh, uh, show them all the details uh, of the flags and then they, they are very happy with the uh, visiting the total parpur uh, buddhist monastery heritage site whole day after that in the premises there is the one stupa like this and then